As your cyclocross bike probably has very similar gearing really to your road bike, you could be forgiven for thinking that they're not all that good for steep climbs. But I think you'd actually be wrong on that one. And that's because steep climbs are a feature of many cyclocross races and they're also great fun to try and get up when you're out riding. So here's how to do it. The faster that you hit the bottom of a climb on your cross bike, the easier you're going to be. The more momentum you can carry, the further you can ride up the climb for free. However twisty and technical the approach to the climb might be, look for places where you can straighten out, attack and gain more speed. Your gearing on the climb really defines your chances of getting up a steep climb in the first place, but it also has a big part to play in traction. Choose too hard a gear and pedal too slowly and you'll lose a bit of traction and you probably won't actually get up the climb in the first place. And by that, I'm meaning something where you're riding about 50 to 60 RPM, so quite low down your block, like I am there. And too easy a gear, so almost in your easiest gear, you might be pedaling at 90 to 100 RPM on the approach to the climb, but Again, you'll lose traction, and with losing the traction, you'll lose speed, so you won't make it to the top either. Gear changes on steep climbs are a bit of a tough one. While hitting the bottom in a bigger gear to get more speed and then changing to an easier gear will help you to get to the top, changing at the wrong moment will probably end your ride or your race. Torque for gear changes, on a muddy rear mech, in a panic, generally equal a bit of a disaster. So make sure you plan your gear change and you do it when you're spinning a bit faster, putting less torque through the pedals. The ideal position on your bike when you're climbing on your cross bike is to have your hands on the hoods and your bum planted on your saddle. This means that your weight is over your rear wheel and you'll keep traction when you're climbing. On the other hand, getting out the saddle and moving right towards the front of the bike removes all of the weight from your rear wheel, so you'll lose traction and you probably won't make it up the climb. On some more explosive climbs, it might be that you actually need to find a midpoint though between being in the saddle and being out of the saddle. To do that, maybe hover a couple of inches, so a few centimetres out of the saddle, still with the majority of your weight over the back wheel, and this gives you the ideal cross between seated grip and out of the saddle power. Generally speaking, for the really steep climbs, the more technical ones or some of the longer ones, it might be that you're better to make a decision at the base of the climb, shoulder your bike, get off and run. And that's because whether you're riding and racing, half riding a climb, sliding back down to the bottom is not good. You'll lose a bunch of time in racing, and if you're riding, you'll land on your ass. Having said all that about making a plan to either ride or run a climb, if you do need to get off partway up a climb after you've tried to ride it, what you need to do is adapt your dismount technique slightly. Think of it as bailing rather than getting off smoothly. So unclip your unclipping foot as you would, bring it over your rear wheel, and at the point you do that, kind of hop off instead of dismounting smoothly. Once you've got both feet on the ground, then get your bike up and onto your shoulder save you a bunch of time and you've probably not got enough speed at that point to actually dismount smoothly so you do need to hop off rather than dismount. <laughs> right so there is our quick guide to riding steep climbs on your cyclocross bike. If you've enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up and why not hit share too. Before I link to any other videos if you haven't subscribed to GCN already you really should to do that click on our channel logo. See Sven Nace's pro guide to getting off and on your cross bike. Click right there and see a guide to cyclocross for beginners with Matt Stevens. Click down there. Finally, there is a link to our shop up on screen. Click that if you'd like to visit there. Go on, thumbs up. <laughs>